Goody Shell Tron here. You can call me Shells, and I'm back, back, back again with a brand new video. And I'm gonna keep it a bow Bray biscuit. Scotty Fit has done it again, and I won't lie to you, I had zero faith that this move was gonna get made by the Carolina Panthers National Football League franchise because history shows that honestly, a lot of the time we do not retain high level talent on our team. But this time, this time, Scotty Fit made it happen. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, and you should know what I'm talking about, let me show you this tweet right here from Adam Schefter, which says, Panthers and offensive tackle Taylor Moten have agreed to a mammoth four-year, $72 million extension that includes $43 million guaranteed at signing. This is huge. Not only because, for one, I thought that we we're going to have Taylor Moten for one year and it'll be a band-aid situation where you just say, okay, we're going to have one year of a good right tackle, but next year we got to go back into the draft or go back in free agency and try to find an offensive lineman and we pay basically $13, $14 million to rent Taylor Moten for one additional year and build up some bad blood because I'm going to tell you right now, 98% of players don't like that franchise tag. Taylor Moten saw what Ryan Ramchek got, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But, uh, you know, when you see a guy who gets all that money and you realize this offseason, you could have making somewhere around that same kind of money. It makes you feel some type of way, especially when you know that you deserve that kind of compensation from a team like the Panthers. But we looked out for him four years, $72 million. That comes out to about $18 million per year. That sounds like a lot, but that's actually huge, huge value for a player like Taylor Moten who comes through and gives us the top tier production at the right tackle spot. This man is absolutely one of the top three right tackles in the NFL right now, but it's not just the money that comes with the value here. There's value in a franchise showing that they're willing to retain talent. This is really good for other free agents who might be looking at coming to the Panthers, other players thinking, okay, the Panthers have some leadership in place where they're actually willing to keep good players. We all know what happened with James Bradbury. The franchise got a little bit cheap, decided to go ahead and pay other players instead of him. And we're looking at the whole NFL recognizing that James Bradbury is a top one, maybe even top two, if you want to argue that, cornerback in the whole league. I 100% believe James Bradbury proved that in Carolina. But... When you see him in a bigger market like New York in the NFC East, it gives you more spotlight and more perspective. And it's tough that we didn't see it then, but it's really important that our franchise is starting to look like someone that can actually keep talent here. And it's the right talent at the right price. Looking at Shaq Thompson, but we'll see how it works out this year. Anyway, this is the tweet from Adam Schefter when Ryan Ramchuk got his money. He said, Ryan is signing a five-year, $90 million extension that includes $60 million guaranteed and makes him the new highest-paid right tackle in the NFL. Look, that's kind of what he deserves. He was an all-pro right tackle, so he does have more value than my man Taylor Moten. He's, he's, look, he's a, he's a better right tackle. I'm not going to say that Taylor Moten is the absolute best right tackle in the league, but this is huge value. $90 million extension, $60 guaranteed. If you'll remember, we had a $72 million uh, contract and $43 million guaranteed. So it's about in line with him getting paid less than the top, top, top tier right tackle in the league. But it's still on the same kind of annual value because his is $18 million, Ryan's is about $19 million, $17 more million guaranteed. But still, this is a huge value for getting Taylor Moten into the building and providing us some stability on the offensive line which we can all acknowledge has been a huge problem for this team for the longest time. Now, can we find a left tackle at some point? Maybe. Hopefully. I'm not going to get into how I felt about the draft because I'll be real with you. A lot of people said I was negative about the draft, said we found a franchise left tackle in the draft, a sleeper in the third round. That didn't quite work out the way we thought it would. But what I will say about that is it was a huge success because one, we were able to get some very strong talent. But two, we were able to get this deal done with every single rookie 
already signed to their deal. I don't know if it was this past season or two years ago. We still had one or two rookies who hadn't signed their deal by early-ish mid-July. So there was still some like up in the air about how much money that we really had to play with in the uh and in the cap room, you know how that can be kind of confusing sometimes because you have to sign all those players, but also have some wiggle room on the back end in case someone gets hurt or whatever happens. You have to sign someone else during the season, right before the season, preseason injuries. Those things always happen. We know about training camp injuries. Those happen all the time. Happens to us quite a bit. Let's be real about that. So it was really important to see that Scotty Fit was not only able to get Taylor Moten to sign this big deal that keeps him in Carolina, but he was able to get all the rookies signed before he did this. The last rookie was signed, I think, June 30th. So he had a two-week window. A two-week window, and he fit Taylor Moten in at the very back end of the deadline. I think the deadline was like 4 p.m. today. And the contract details got released at like 3 o'clock. So this was probably done at like 2, 2.30. But still, about one hour before the deadline, Scotty Fit was working hard. And we heard the news. A few days ago, about, we only have two, three days left. There was talks about, you know, how can the team and Taylor meet in the middle? And my thought was, there is no middle, right? Ryan Ramchek just got his money. There is no middle. If you're, if you're Taylor Moten, you say, okay, bro, I spent the last year of my deal on this team thinking I'm going to make max, max dollars. If I got to sit here and spend a full year betting on myself again to make me get even more money than Ryan Ramchek next offseason, I might got to go ahead and bet on myself. But somehow, Scotty Fit found a way $72 million later. We have some stability on our O-line. Now, there is a lot more work to be done moving forward, but I don't want to focus on that too much because the real focus here is that we have some leadership in place that finally acknowledges that a good franchise rewards good players and keeps them on the team long term to help build a culture to help build actual veteran presence that's been here their whole career and it's not just that it's also that we were able to fit this under the salary cap i don't know how the man did it we're not in the negatives right now we're not exactly in the super positive like right now i think it's spot rack has it as 2.79 million dollars in estimated cop space for the top 51, which means there's still two more spots that need to be added in there, but those are probably going to be, you know, just another million added, maybe a million and a half added to the cap space. So let's talk about, you know, 1.2, $1 million in cap space. This is going to probably be the end of Justin Burris. Now, we are kind of weak at the safety position right now. There's not too many players who can play safety. I don't like Haha Clinton Dix. I'm not really sure you can play strong safety regardless, but Sam Franklin's a good option. There's not much other options at strong safety. It really is Dustin Burris and Sam Franklin who are both good. I like Sam Franklin more as a linebacker who can play in coverage sometimes, but either way, those are still good options. I like some depth, at least one man of depth at strong safety, but whatever choice gets made, the fact still does remain that you're going to have to find someone somewhere to cut off this roster and give yourself, I want to say maybe like four or five, maybe even six million dollars of wiggle room to be able to sign players if someone gets hurt, if things happen in the preseason training camp, even into the season, may have to bring in players. They're not going to be like blockbuster players you're bringing in, but they still have to get paid. And going into the season with only $2 million on the books to work with ain't going to work, right? And the only player I can think of off top right now who gives us a, a pretty solid amount of uh, wiggle room here, who's in the top 51 right now, is Justin Burris. He, we cut him, we get like $3 million, $3.5 million, and that can be basically all of it right there. One cut gives us most, if not all, of the wiggle room we need, and that's real tough when you consider just how impactful Justin Burris was this past season. Like I said, Sam Franklin has been good as well, but there's not much, if any, strong safety depth right behind him. The obvious response would be Jeremy Chin. I'm not sure Jeremy Chin is going to be playing strong safety. And if he's playing strong safety, who's playing free safety? Who on the team right now is a starter level free safety? 
there's some depth issues at that position. So while Justin Burris being gone would open up a cap space, it would also put us in a pretty weird position as far as the secondary goes. So there's still work to be done, but Scotty Finnis earned himself the rest of the day off. This man was putting in work, I gotta believe, for the past two, three weeks straight, probably the last month and a half, talking to Taylor Moten's camp, getting him in there, talking about, look, bro, how can we make this work? We can, we wanna keep you here for the next four or five years. We can make this work, but we gotta come down. We gotta, you know, meet in the middle. I don't know what kind of bargaining skill this man has. I don't know what kind of finessing skills this man has. How are we actually able to sign this man? Because we weren't the first team to sign a GM. Scotty Fit might have just earned himself a statue out front. And there is a vacancy for a statue out front, ain't there? So, I don't know, bro. If we go ahead and go crazy this season, Scotty Fit might got to get a statue. I don't know. I, it might have to be Scotty Fit out there in front of BOA because this man has been put putting in work all off season. So hey, Taylor Moten, congratulations on your money, man. Panthers, congratulations on becoming a franchise that has the beginnings, the beginnings of becoming something that fans love to see. You're, you're bringing in the talent and you're retaining them. And it's talent that the whole Panthers fan base can all agree is a good signing. We can all agree keeping Taylor Moten for a long term is a smart move. People had, you know, we were kind of split on Shaq Thompson. We were kind of split even on CMC to a certain degree. We can all agree that Taylor Moten was a great signing. And this is still some very strong value. Bringing him in at $72 million, $18 million a year. I have no problem with it. That's how I feel about it, though, man. What are y'all's thoughts on Taylor Moten? The signing, was it too much? Did we get a good bargain? What are your thoughts on the cap space? What do you think we're going to be doing? Do you think there's any other moves that might get made anytime soon? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win. 